for doing well. Just got a quick question before I start on this video here. Um, well, I dropped a little bit of a departure from my normal content here. This little, this little video right here, this little bit, um, this guitar if I wrote. Um, I may use that as a channel theme. I don't know where I'll use it yet, but it could be something interesting. I was just kind of curious, and I'm hope, hopefully I'll get some comments on this. If not, it's okay. But I'm just kind of curious. Did you guys like it? Do you think I should use that? And would you want to see me do some stuff like that in the future with other projects that I do on this channel? Because we have some that are coming up soon. I'm not going to talk about them just yet until I have them pretty close to finalized. But I, but once I get those done, I'm sure you're going to love them. I'm pretty confident in that. Anyways. So we're going to touch on a few things real quick, but mainly this is actually going to be a uh, climatological outlook. We're going to be uh, taking a look at the rest of the month. We are getting close to the second half of September. So, and usually between the first few days of September and the latter half of September, things can change a lot and there's still other variables to talk about. But in the meantime, we're going to catch up on the weather today as well. So we'll start out with the uh, severe weather threat that we had earlier now. It was a slight risk around the northeast, which included a 2% chance of tornadoes within a 50 miles of a given point. That's now been recently, actually as of 12 minutes ago, downgraded back to a marginal risk. And really, I think this storm threat's just about over with. And then we'll be returning to a few days of no severe and then maybe towards the latter half of the week we'll have to watch that i mentioned that and my uh, weekly forecast link to that will be in the top right hand corner but as far as severe reports i wasn't expecting a big outbreak of any kind it was going to be a very localized very minor outbreak so and results are in and that's exactly what we have going on here just 12 wind reports and two hail reports hail reports most likely aren't even over there it doesn't look like they are at all if anything it looks like it's in arizona which is what i predicted earlier so that's pretty much our severe weather deal take a quick look and we'll quickly touch on the tropics so this is a, these are two tropical waves. Confidence that has increased that this tropical wave right here, tropical disturbance number one, will develop into a tropical cyclone of some sort, albeit the confidence is still not high yet. However, on this last update here, which is about maybe, we're closing in on two hours ago, I'd say, the uh, NHC has really lost a lot of confidence in this. Let's take a look at the satellites and see what's happened here. Oh, that's an interesting little uh, feature there. I'm probably sh um, I'm gonna be guessing that's the remnants of uh, Hurricane Earl that's headed out to sea. I'm almost certain it is when I think about it. But when you look at this set, the satellite imagery of this of this tropical system right here, it does look like it's really trying to get its act together. I do think that uh, gradual development is still possible. I think it's going to take a little longer than five days, but as we push further and further along, I look for increasing chances of development. Whereas this storm, it kind of looks like it's uh, getting sheared apart right now, and it's going to be going into less favorable conditions over the next few days. As we have a ridge coming off of the... Uh, east coast of the u.s it's going to be heading out to sea and it's just going to tear the it's literally going to tear this one apart but also want to note that this looks like this might be another piece of energy that could be coming off the west africa and work working its way out into the atlantic what this environment will look like over here will be is a big question but this track looks like it could be a little bit further south which could potentially bode better for it gonna be hard to say it's hard to say though we'll have to wait and see but 
that's pretty much all we're doing here with the uh, tropical outlook so we'll see what goes on with this if I'm gonna say maybe soon that they'll turn this into uh, invest 91 or or an invest of some sort I don't know why I said 91 that was the last one but um anyway we're gonna go on to our climatological outlook here so we're going to just jump ahead to days 8 through 14. We're sitting at about two weeks out from now. Well, actually, we might do 6 and 10 as well. So basically, this the way this works is any areas that are in the blue are going to be areas that we're expecting cooler than average temperatures, and areas that are in the red and pink colors or brighter are going to be areas that we expect above normal temperatures or temperatures above average and the uh, darker the colors or the brighter the colors usually determines um, the percentage in, or confidence in which we're expecting those above average temperatures so on day six through ten the west looks like it's going to be the western half of the country looks like it's definitely going to be cold colder than average Chances varying up to about, I'd say, 60%. And also, forgot to mention, areas that are in the white are a neutral, are a, a neutral chance of either or. So that being said, we can see that uh, the west is cooler than average, and then the east is warmer than average. With uh, the Ohio Valley, the Missouri Valley, and the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast regions, having extreme confidence almost to 75 maybe even 80 percent confidence of above average temperatures once we get towards the southeast and a little bit more towards the central plains that lets off kind of lean in more between 60 and 70 percent and then it continues to drop off as we get further into the plains and then closer to and closer towards the rockies so with that's six through ten let's look through days eight through fourteen so right now on days 8 through 14, for the most part, everybody looks like they're still going to be above average. Main point of emphasis or the uh, highest probability of above average temperatures are going to be towards the eastern half of the country again. And we're looking towards uh, almost from the Ozarks and maybe some parts of Oklahoma as well as Texas. In areas further off to the east, we're looking at maybe between 70 to 80 or 60 to 70 percent chance of above average temperatures everywhere else we're kind of looking at more 40 50 percent unless you're in this area here in the white where you have an equal chance of either warmer or cooler than average let's go ahead and look at the precipitation values so from 6 to 10 no surprises here is the jet stream still pretty far to the north we can expect uh, drier than average weather around the eastern half of the country. Not to say that you're going to be dry for the rest of the month. No, that's not the case at all. But we're not going to have the same kind of activity that we would have in, say, like July or something where we were getting pop-up showers and storms. And more often than not, that's actually what's going to be the case around here. So even if you're in this, uh, this tan-colored area here, this does... Like I said, this does not mean you can get you can't get pop up showers and thunderstorms and make this almost irrelevant. And then if you're in this darker region where we're sitting at about 70 percent, 60 to 70 percent, it could be a little bit more tough going there. But even then, pop up showers and thunderstorms. And this also doesn't factor in any sort of potential tropical cyclones that may come into play. Now, over towards the western half of the country. Our jet stream starting to dip in a little bit further south here. It's kind of doing a bit like this right now. It's kind of in a uh, unstable phase where we'll get these storm systems that'll dip down here, then kind of dip back up into Canada. These troughs are going to be merging right here. So, of course, with that happening, the Climate Center has pretty much laid it all out here. This is going to be our area where we're going to have wetter than average days ahead for pretty much the north, 
the uh, central northwest, I would say, I would call this area. But uh, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and Utah. Utah especially needs rain right now. They've had a pretty rough drought. But, uh, and then also we have uh, New Mexico, the rest of the Four Corners region, Nevada, and the eastern parts of California, especially over towards the Sierras, which is great news very important area when it comes to water and snow we need those areas to stay to stay out of drought but anywhere in the green basically we have increased chance of above average rainfall and we have a little spot in southern florida that has an increased chance of rainfall so we'll go to days 8 through 14 and it's for the rest of the country we're starting to look pretty dry all across the board where we also have uh, parts of uh, the Tennessee Valley here, like we had in day six through 10, where we have uh, drier than average weather expected. But also we have another area that's popped up here close towards the end of the month that looks like it could be drier than average towards the uh, Northern Plains and even towards the Northwest here. It's amazing how quickly things can change, but we'll have, but this is a forecast mon model that we always have to continually watch because there's all sorts of un unknown variables that can come into play here like for example a tropical system like what we could be seeing within the next week or so I'll post the uh, tropical outlook video on the top right hand corner at this time but a tropical uh, system of any kind could blow this right out the water depending on its track and I'm a little bit more confident over towards the north and north northwestern plains as far as uh, maybe a slightly drier than average deal here. But if the jet stream were to suddenly hold position over this area, I think this area would be chopped in half as far as uh, drier than average as far as precipitation is concerned. A lot of interesting variables. That's what makes weather entertaining to watch, and it makes it so interesting to a lot of us. But beyond this, this is all I got for you guys. I'll have another video for you tomorrow. I think I might do another tropical out, outlook, maybe. I might do something a little different. I'll figure it out. But until the next video, this has been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. I'll see you guys later.